Please welcome Microsoft Corporate Vice President, Skype, Gurdeep Singh Pa. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here. It's great to see all the Skype uh, folks interested in the keynote to be here. Uh, wasn't sure because we were competing with Office 365 and some other, other topics, but really, it's, it's really great to have you. Uh, you know, so uh, I'm Gurdeep. I run uh, Skype. Um, and I have to say, you know, working on Skype is truly, uh, truly a privilege and an honor. Uh, there are very few things you can work on in life which are a verb. And frankly, whether be it in work or life, Skype is a verb for communications. Wherever you go in the world, people will tell you a story about Skype. Uh, it's not just about, about the US and, and the awareness that is there here. Everywhere you go, people will tell you a personal story about Skype. And that actually matters. And I will tell you why it matters in a bit. Now, you could say, well, you know, here's Gurdeep, run Skype, talking big things about Skype. Okay? And I know there's a bunch of you who are pretty quantitative sort of folks here in the room. So I thought I'll start with sharing some numbers with you. Okay? Skype has had more than 1.1 billion downloads on iTunes and Google Play. On a good day, there are 3 billion minutes of calling on Skype worldwide. Now you can see, I like billions with a B. You know what I like more than billions with a B? A thousand billions. Since we launched video calling on Skype, we've had three trillion minutes of calling. Okay, now at that point, when you get into such big numbers, frankly, numbers don't make sense. In fact, there's a human study done that humans lose perception of large numbers at some point. So it's best to use numbers like gazillion and humongous and, and all that, because I think that probably sounds much better than. Um, and then, you know, when you get into meetings, We do more than one billion minutes, one billion meetings a year. Okay, these are really big numbers. Uh, competitors still, if you go to their website, will talk about 20 million meetings a month and so on and so forth. I mean, really, there is. If you look at Skype and Skype for Business, there is nobody who is doing more meetings in the world uh, than than happen on Skype. Now, why this matters is this: when you're an enterprise and you're rolling out Skype for your employees. You don't have to go train and tell them what this thing is. We saw this for the first time when we rebranded Link to Skype for Business. The usage, the intensity of usage, went up across the board when folks switched to it. And this is a really, really important point. You know, there are lots of communication solutions, and I'm sure all of you have them. You spend so much money and so much time rolling them out inside your enterprise, and you do not get the usage. Meeting rooms are my favorite example, but I'll come to that in a bit. Accenture, they're on Skype for Business, doing three billion conferencing minutes a year. Three billion conferencing minutes a year. And that's, you know, they have a workforce which is really large. Uh, in fact, they're gonna be speaking here at the conference about their experience and how they operate a global infrastructure with very high reliability. Uh, it's really the mission critical thing for them. You can also, you can go and attend these, less, uh, these uh, sessions. There's Accenture, Cushman and Wakefield, and Kelly Services. They're also gonna be sharing the experience with actually Office 365 E5 services in the cloud. So these are you know, great, uh, some, some great evidence points on, at a, at a high scale, how you can have a communication system like Skype really becoming an important lifeline for the business. So, Today we have a real full house uh, uh, keynote for you. Uh, we're gonna be talking about lots of stuff, but let me start with one topic which is really near and dear to me, which is modern collaboration. Uh, you know, I believe that at Skype, starting the early days, uh, you know, with Link and before that, in some ways, you know, we've been setting the trend for what collaboration ought to be, uh, digital collaboration ought to be. 
And, and we're gonna continue that. We're gonna continue to set that pace. One of the very important things there is that as you have devices coming out, as you have new capabilities from operating systems, you know how we take advantage of them. Because I think they really become important points in getting more and more collaboration capability in. So to, to rather than talk about it, let me invite up Delanda Coleman onto the stage. Delanda is gonna share with some of the new work that is gonna be available in a few weeks. Delanda. Thank you, Gideep. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Delanda Coleman, and I'm going to show you the new Skype for Business experience on the Mac client. For this release, we've completely redesigned the client and made it a more native experience both to Skype as well as an exper a native experience to the Mac client. So first, let me show you how it looks. So as you can see, I'm in my chat window. And the chat window has been integrated so that all your recent chats are in one place. And as you can see by the status bar of either red or green, I can tell if my colleagues are available. Also, as you can see by the little red dot, as I get new messages, there's an indicator to let you know that you have a new message. So I'm going to just respond really quickly, let him know that I'm kind of busy right now. <laughs> But if I want to uh, go to the next conversation, I can easily jump to that next conversation without going to another window. So that's an example of how easy and intuitive it is. Now, you've all come here to understand a little bit more about our meeting space. So I think at this point, I'm going to jump into the meeting experience. Here you'll see I have a list of all my appointments for the day. And there's no need for me to jump into Outlook because Skype is intelligent enough to already communicate with Exchange and bring that information in. Now, with the meeting experience, I can easily join any meeting that's already scheduled with just one click to join. <coughs> now here you'll see, I want to take a little time out to explain to you some of the nuances and the design elements that we've... <laughs> 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 awesome. <laughs> so here are some key design elements that we've been working on. If you notice in the reduced size screen that we have a black bar rather than the traditional uh, blue background that we've had. We did some testing and what we saw when we had the blue background versus the black, black background is that meetings actually performed better from a ratings perspective and users had a better experience in the meeting. And so we made that design color change. Now let's go into the full screen mode. If you notice in full screen mode, you can see all the meeting participants in a two by two video uh, display. And we also have them, these wonderful, beautiful people in high definition video. Now, and also you'll notice is that you take advantage of the full real estate of the Mac client. So from edge to edge, you have a high definition experience. Now, so what I'd like to end with for this particular section is that it's very, it's uh, no distractions. There's no meeting buttons or meeting commands in the meeting. And so I guess the next logical question is, how do I do something? The client is intelligent enough if you simply move your mouse over, it knows that you want to do something. So as I move my mouse over, I can actually show and click on the meeting roster. Here is the meeting roster, and in the roster you would see all the participants that are in the meeting, and if you've missed a critical attendee, you can search for their name right here. Also, we see the chat window. And so you can have, if you don't want to distract the uh, presenter, you can simply type in a chat in the chat window. So that is uh, the meeting commands view. And if you want to hide it, you can simply hide it. But also, if you notice, that the screen has also been dynamically resized so that there are, again, no distractions in the video. That is an example of the unified communications experience that we bring to Skype. You can easily have a meeting, you can integrate people, authenticated people, or external contacts to the meeting, as well as you can have a chat conversation or add them via a phone call. 
Now, the last thing that I would like to show you in the meetings is the PowerPoint presentation. The number one thing that people want to do in a meeting is to actually share content and collaborate. Here you see my colleagues presenting the sales presentation. The sales presentation also takes full advantage of the real estate. And as you can see, the meeting takes up all of the real estate. As he's flipping through, the image is crystal clear with, high, again, high definition and really rich and immersive video. So what do you guys think? So that is the meeting experience. Uh, Gurdeep, do you think we should show him some more? Yeah, why don't we show some calling? OK. So I'm gonna, that was the Mac experience. And before I transition to the calling, I'd like you to know that the Mac client will be generally available in October, in just a few weeks. All right, to call, uh, to show you the experience on the iPhone, I'm gonna go to my contacts and look up Gurdip and initiate a Skype call to Gurdip. And I'm gonna switch over to show you on the, on the iPhone side what the experience looks like. Get the mobile network to call us. Let's try it again. Yep. And we're waiting for the call. All right. Well, that doesn't seem to go through. Let me, let me uh, at least without the call, show you the integration. So one of the things we've done is, uh, oh, here's the call coming in. Sorry. Could you try that again? That took a while to come in. I don't know why. Okay, so the call's coming in. Now I'm on the lock screen and I can see the call and I can actually see the call as a Skype for business audio call. This is using the new call kit integration in iOS 10. So let me go ahead and accept the call and immediately go on mute. So there's, uh, it's, I think it hung up, I think, here you go. So now I'm in the call using the call kit integration. Now, now this is a time when typically, um, could you call again? I wanna make sure we get the, so now the, the hair salon is calling me. <laughs> Can you call me again? Yeah. Because I wanted to make a very important point. So let me go ahead and accept this call from Delanda. I'm done. Yeah, mute. And now uh, I'm waiting for a call from my hair salon. <laughs> but the key thing is, you know, iOS 10 has this great capability that if I'm in a VoIP call, a Skype for Business call, I actually, am, my call automatically doesn't get cut off. So I can send this call to voicemail and I can continue the call that I have. So this is the call kit integration in iOS 10, uh, which I think is fantastic. You know, we're gonna be rolling that out soon uh, as part of the Skype for Business client and also we'll be adding Siri kit support so you can have voice-based calls so and so. All right, so now just before I leave this, uh, leave this demo, let me go back to the home screen. You can also see that right in your call logs and recents, you can see that Skype for Business calls are right there. And if you call that person, it actually makes a Skype for Business call. So really what we are saying here, thanks to this affordance in iOS 10, your this mobile phone actually for many people becomes your main phone. You don't need to have a phone on the desk which people are hauling around. I think so, this is really fantastic, super excited about it. Thank you, Delanda, that was great. So, uh, you know, this is what you see here is our commitment to make sure that we keep pushing the collaboration experience forward and not just necessarily on Microsoft devices. We want to be there wherever your users are. In fact, if there's one big thing you take away from this here thing today, <laughs> I know, I know, you expect us to only innovate uh, on Microsoft experiences. No, as you can see, we're certainly, in this case, this is the modern experience that we're gonna have for Skype across all devices, and this happens to be coming on the Mac first. Uh, so, so super exciting. Okay, so let's start, let's change topics. Let's talk about meeting rooms. Now, whenever you bring up meeting rooms, you know, the whole energy level in the room goes down. Why? <laughs> meeting rooms are really expensive. Meeting rooms are clunky. 
Meeting rooms have bad UI. Meeting rooms are hard to manage. They don't interoperate. In fact, I think Captain Kirk was totally wrong. I mean, this is the final frontier, meeting rooms, OK? For the last at least 15 years I've been in this business, uh, you know, you've seen almost every malady that you could imagine. And, and it's, not, it's not gotten corrected. I mean, you see, our industry is very efficient. And these kind of inefficiencies get ironed out very quickly. But there were so many factors for that. And uh, this is an area we've been super focused on because we said this is probably one of the biggest pain points in collaboration today. And how can we have a solution that fits all the constraints that are there? So in order to show you the work that we're doing and we are super excited about, let me invite up Ilya Buchstein. Uh, Ilya. Thank you, Gurdip, uh, for that nice low bar. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Indeed, when we announced Project Rigel six months ago, our goal was to transform every meeting space. We set out with our partners to make it easier for all of you to deploy and manage meeting devices, to make it so that you can afford to deploy meeting devices to every meeting room, and perhaps most importantly, to deliver a Skype meeting experience that all of your users would want to use in every meeting. And so today, it's my privilege to announce that Project Rigel is here as the next generation of Skype room systems. So let's start by looking at and joining a meeting already in progress on one of these new Skype room system devices. As we walk into our meeting room, the first thing you'll notice is a meeting experience very similar to what Delonda showed you on the Mac. So we have a new video gallery also with corner-to-corner -corner HD video, two-by-two two layout for our remote participants. I can now also, as a person walking into the room, control this whole experience on our new Skype Room Systems console. So if you're like me, one of the first things you want to do when you walk into a meeting is see who's online. And I can do this right from this console. I can see my participants. And if someone is calling in from maybe a noisy cell phone, I can easily, quickly mute them. I can also quickly and easily add a participant. In fact, if I want to invite someone outside my organization, I can just type in their email address. And the Skype room system will send out the scheduled meeting invitation to them right to their calendar. Now, I can also participate in the instant messaging conversation that's going on in this meeting. Perhaps most importantly, as Delonda said, the key thing people want to do is share content. And finally, these devices let you share content without having to bring a PC into the meeting room. For this meeting, the organizer attached the PowerPoint to the calendar invite, and that PowerPoint is waiting for me right in the content bin of this device. All I have to do to share it is just touch it. It's displayed and shared into the meeting and I can control it right from this console. So we switched layouts. I can go ahead and advance uh, PowerPoint. I can actually switch layouts, so I can go into a full screen content layout, or I can go back to our uh, shared video and content layout. Now at this point, I'm sure many of you are wondering, how hard was it for me to join this meeting? Was it the normal 10-minute late start fumbling around with cables experience? This next generation of Skype room systems finally solves this problem with a one-touch join experience. So I'm going to go ahead and hang up on this meeting and show you that experience. Meeting participants, I'll be right back. <coughs> now, before I rejoin our meeting in progress, I want to take just a minute to actually introduce these devices, the actual hardware. What you're looking at here is the Logitech Smart Dock for Skype Room Systems. This is the first of our new devices that's going to ship in just a few weeks. It's a beautiful premium device. It's got a nice rotating swivel base. It's going to ship with Logitech's Conference Cam Connect AV peripherals. Perhaps more importantly for all of you, in IT, this is built around the Surface Pro 4 devices you're already familiar with. And all of these Skype room systems are standard Windows 10 devices. And our new meeting experience is a Windows 10 Store UWP. 
This means that you can deploy and manage these devices with the Windows 10 tools you already know and have in place. These devices enable your users, all of us, to do the things we want to do in meeting rooms every day quickly and easily, starting with just dialing a phone number. So of course we have a dial pad. But in addition to just dialing a phone number, these devices let you quickly add content, add video. This means that the next generation of Skype room systems can not only replace every conference room phone, but they actually bring this full Skype meeting experience to every room. Now, of course, I can start up an ad hoc meeting, but also if I do want to bring a PC into the room, I can plug in and project, and if I'm in an online meeting and I plug in, these devices will automatically share that PC screen into the meeting without having to hit any extra buttons or fumble around with any settings. Thank you. The real magic of Skype Room Systems, as I said earlier, is our one-touch join experience for scheduled meetings. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and rejoin our meeting in progress. I have to get my uh, fingers to be capacitive. As we're rejoining, because it's a meeting in progress, we're going to go ahead and get right into the layout, pick up exactly where we left off. So we're going to be seeing our participants' video, we're going to be seeing the content, and all the control I need is going to be within my arm's reach. That's great, thank you. So I can take over the presentation, I can start driving the uh, PowerPoint, I can pick up exactly where I left off. Now, as I said earlier, these devices are going to be the most flexible set of solutions in the industry. They attach to the displays you already have in place. You don't need to hang and bang. You don't need to replace. You can attach to a standard flat panel like I have here. They also work with our ecosystem of certified for Skype for Business audio and video devices. From our partners, such as Sennheiser and Jabra, uh, you can see the devices we're launching with right here. So we will have packages of Skype room systems that will scale from the huddle room to the most complex conference room. So now it is my pleasure to introduce our launch partners who are actually our participants in this meeting. And I want to start by introducing the Vice President and General Manager of the Video Collaboration Unit at Logitech, Scott Wharton. Scott, good morning. Hey, good morning, Ilya. Thanks for having us. Our entire team is really excited to launch Logitech Smart Dock, which is an all-new Skype room system solution. Our two companies have a long uh, and successful partnership together. In fact, we've shipped nearly 20 million Skype-certified video conferencing devices so far. So this is just a natural extension of our partnership. With the Smart Dock, as you said, people can join a meeting now with just a single touch. And when combined with the Logitech conference cams, Customers now have an affordable and end-to-end -end video collaboration solution now for meeting rooms of any size. So this is a big leap forward for Skype for Business customers. And you can see the Smart Dock in our booth right now, and we'll be shipping it actually in a couple of weeks. So we're, we're super excited about it. Thank you so much, Scott. We can't wait to see this device ship in just a few weeks. Next, I'd like to introduce Fred Bargetzi, who's the CTO of Crestron. Good morning, Fred. Hey, Elia. Thanks for having me. So for now almost 15 years, we've been embedding Microsoft technology into our solutions, and there are millions of products in our field. We launched our first Skype for Business solutions in 2013, and leading companies like ConocoPhillips, Toyota, KPMG, and many more use these solutions every day. So it was natural for us to partner on the next generation of Skype room systems. What's really great about this new system is that our customers will enjoy easy installation and configuration, but more importantly, a native and simple Skype for Business meeting experience. Now, the Skype meeting experience everyone knows on their desktop will be in every huddle space and conference room. Combined with Crestron AV technology, together we have solutions to cover the entire enterprise. We are really proud to be here at Ignite to introduce the Crestron Next Generation Skype Room System. Well, thank you so much, Fred. Last but certainly not least, uh, I want to introduce Polycom. 
And by the way, here in our setup, we are using the Logitech PTZ Pro camera, and along with that, the Polycom Trio, so great at audio that it has no problem in a room this big with all the echo. So from Polycom, we have their head of Microsoft Solutions, Mr. Erez Abraham. Erez, good morning. Thank you, Ilya. We're thrilled to offer Polycom's new Skype room system, the Polycom MSR series. The very best audio from Polycom's flagship conference phone, Real Presence Trio, or with the CX5100 that provides a unique 360 degree view of the room. Now, Erez, uh, you mentioned your 360 degree conference cam, the, the CX5100. Uh, at the same time, I'm pretty sure a lot of people in the room, as we've been talking about the Skype room systems, are wondering about their current video teleconferencing systems. They may not, you know, you may not have them in every room, but they're expensive systems. You may have even recently bought Cisco systems. So I'm guessing people are wondering if they can connect those to their Skype for Business experience. And with that, I think you've got one more announcement to make, right? Yes, absolutely. We're very excited to introduce Polycom Real Connect service for Office 365. This new service enables video endpoints to join Skype for Business video call within Office 365. And so, actually, people may think they're seeing your roundtable device video in panoramic view, but actually this is a Polycom immersive VTC system and the Cisco SX10 system coming live from your San Jose headquarters, joining the Skype for Business experience using, really, uh, not, nothing fake here, your real connect service in Azure for Office 365. That's correct. We have the Skype room system, a Polycom immersive telepresence system, and a legacy Cisco endpoint, all in the same meeting with video through Office 365. <laughs> Ilya, one more thing to mention, this breakthrough technology is going to be available for public preview before the end of this year. Oh, that's fantastic. And for everyone in the room, I wanted to emphasize this new service is integrated in the Office 365 admin experience. So you can find it in the Office 365 marketplace. You can assign the licenses to users like you would any other Office 365 add-on. And when you do that, the user just schedules a Skype for Business meeting like they would any other meeting. And that meeting automatically has extra interop information added to the invite. And of course, those VTCs just join right into the experience as you just saw. Well, thank you, Erez. Now, last thank but the thank you. So, last but absolutely not least, uh, I want to introduce someone who's been a fantastic partner for us. Their help has actually helped us shape our meeting room solutions because they, like many of you, manage an incredibly complex environment, over 13,000 meeting rooms uh, of mixed types of devices. And so they work super closely with me to provide their input. Uh, so it's my pleasure to introduce the general manager of meeting rooms at Microsoft IT, Lynn Keppel. Lynn, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Great. I'm really excited to be here today with you. Um, first off, I can now give time back to my employees and I should say Microsoft's employees and our IT pros with this simple and familiar Skype experience. You saw the key pain point that we have with one touch join, and it enables people to meet and collaborate simply and quickly. I can cost effectively provide premier audio quality now and deploy video to every meeting room. With the portfolio of these meeting rooms, I now have a fit for purpose for every single room, and that includes Microsoft Surface Hub, with the rich ink and touch collaboration experience. Another key significant piece I'm really excited about is the fact that we can now deploy and manage to these meeting rooms with the complexity that we've had in years past. This next year we'll deploy to 5,000 rooms across Microsoft worldwide of our 13,000 conference rooms. So I wanna thank you, Ilya, and our partners for these simplified and consistent experiences across all of our Skype solutions. Well, thank you again, Lynn, and thank you to all of our partners.
You know, Project Rigel has been an amazing journey for us and our partners, uh, and we want to thank the over 1,500 of you who signed up for our preview, and of course, all of you here at the conference. And one small way that we wanted to do that is by making uh, available five of these Logitech systems for you to be able to win. You can do that by uh, using the hashtag meeting accomplished on Twitter and Instagram. So I encourage you to do that. I also hope to see many of you at our session tomorrow where we will talk more about how this next generation of Skype room systems can help all of you transform every meeting room. Thank you. Thank you, Ilya. So what do you think, folks? What do you think? You think we are close to solving this meeting room problem? Uh, and you know, what is really great about this, that was a Surface Pro 4. So from an experience perspective, you know, this is not an alien device that somebody's walking up to, you know, inside your enterprise. Uh, and I think that is really important. The other piece, I think the tyranny of closed vertical systems is finally over. We're talking about an open ecosystem. You're seeing industry-leading partners bringing their best technology in a way that you can choose. You're not locked in with anything. And that is really, really powerful. I think this industry has really needed that. And we've all been waiting around, when is this going to happen? It's also about modern design. I mean, these experiences are really, really easy. And it's really what you want. If you don't want to walk into the laptop, you have that option. If you want to walk into the laptop, it's very easy to project. It works all the time. That is super important. And lastly, you, know, you do have the option to integrate these solutions yourself. But our partners are going to be bringing these complete solutions for you. You literally can go up to a website, select the kind of room you want, and you have options of systems you can buy end-to-end -end and can roll them out. So you know, as far as I'm concerned, this meeting rooms problem I consider solved. And I am, I've had, I'm probably one of the biggest critics of meeting rooms, and the team knows that. And uh, I think we are finally getting there with this, especially with the interop service, which isn't about you know, going and installing a bunch of alien servers and then putting more alien servers next to them because you need redundancy and so on. All this is enabled in the cloud. It is provisioned the way you provision a seat, and it just lights up for you. So this is truly transformative. And guess what? All this, these solutions start at $10,000. Wait, you're not at Cisco Live. Actually. <laughs> So these solutions are going to start from under 2K and then scale up. Listen, I, we know what complex rooms look like just the way you guys do. Uh, you go to Satya's room, the boardroom at Microsoft. I mean, that's a pretty complex room. And so we've got everything from that side to a four-person, two-person huddle room, you know, really accommodated with this solution. So we are super excited about this. Uh, anyway, so let's move on. And of course, those are our partners. And uh, I should I remind you, I think Ilya probably touched on, is that Logitech solutions are going to be available next month. Crestron in, in the coming quarter, so the last quarter of the year. And Polycom is going to be shipping their solutions starting early part of next year. So all these are really going to be coming to the market. Please try them out. All these boots are here. OK, let's change gears for a bit. Um, the intelligent cloud, you know, one of the great affordances you get when you are in the cloud uh, is that you have lots of data and you can do lots of interesting things with it. Two years ago, I got up on stage uh, at the code conference and did something super risky. I demonstrated for the first time in humankind a spoken to spoken language translation. I was on Skype speaking English to somebody who was speaking German. It was, a, it was a mom, one of those moments where, you know, you said the human race has taken a step forward. It wasn't, you know, I was doing the demo. Some incredible amount of work over decades actually went into enabling that moment. So ever since two years ago when that happened, um, you know, there's been, okay, when are we going to bring some of these capabilities to, the, to our business users? Now, the business users have a higher bar. And as you know, language, natural language, speech models, they require a lot of work. We need a lot of data to improve them and so on. And we've been on that journey. So we've been looking for some scenarios on how we can bring some of this capability into our business solutions as well. So um, 
Now, we launched Skype meetings broadcast last year, and it's been super popular. Uh, around the world, we get uh, these testimonials on how people are using this because they can really use it in, in new scenarios like webinars and so on and so forth. So we thought, because there are multiple keynotes happening at the same time, why don't we take a peek into Kirk Koningsbauer's keynote at Office 365? So we've been actually uh, having that on Skype meeting broadcast. So let's see if we can get him here. To help you on the digital transformation. What we're going to do today is focus in on reinventing product, productivity okay. and business process. So we'll now Kirk is going to be doing his presentation. You can see that I'm I can pick English. And if I pick English, we are going to be doing transcription in real time of what he's speaking. Now, this is great for accessibility, right? It's great. I mean, you, you are, if, if you're not even a, maybe a, a natural English speaker, you can actually read along while that is going on. But we took it one more level. You can now select multiple languages, and depending on the receiver, the user can pick which language they want to attend the meeting in. So, you know, we all work in multinationals, and we have folks around the world who have different native languages. We're going to support 50 languages. 50 languages. This is going to be in previews starting next quarter. And we can just ramp up the languages after that. And of course, if you like to listen to Captain Kirk Konigsbauer in Klingon, <laughs> we have that as well. So broadcast meetings, you know, this is really the power of cloud intelligence. There's a lot of work happening in the industry around artificial intelligence. Microsoft is absolutely a leader. Uh, Satya is going to talk a lot about that today if you go for his keynote. Um, you know, so we're bringing a lot of that cloud intelligence onto communication solutions as well. So now, on your device, on any device, because meetings broadcast you can have on any device, uh, on your time, either you can watch it while it's happening, or you can TiVo the meeting, or you can come back later and attend the meeting, and now in any language, the language that you want, you can actually attend your meetings. So very excited about this. Now, uh, before I go on to the next phase of the keynote, I would like to invite up Timothy Kruger, who's the, the head of global messaging and collaboration at Kelly Services. Tim. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, Thank you for inviting Kelly, me. Yeah, Kelly Services uh, made an early bet on Office 365, E5, rolling it out for your enterprise. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, we have 11,000 uh, licenses, and we basically use all of the, the suite. We've, we've got uh, the messaging, the, the document sharing, and, and, and storage. Um, instant messaging, audio, video meetings. Uh, we use serves as our int company intranet, and we're now in the process of doing Skype uh, phone. That's fantastic. Now, you know, you are, I'm, I'm really impressed in the sense that you, uh, we rolled out uh, E5, which is the voice capabilities, in December of last year. And during that time, you know, in sort of 10 short months, you went from evaluating, deciding, and starting to scale that out. Can you tell us about your experience and how that's helping the business? It's, it's been great. Um, we're, we're, we, uh, it, it's really allowing us to uh, have our, our employees work from anywhere. And, and that's really key to our strategy now is that, that we want them to be able to choose whatever device they happen to have at that time wherever they happen to be at that time, whatever time it is, right, to be able to use those devices. And this is just critical to that, you know, to that use, so. Yeah, you know, there was one thing when we were talking about earlier, which was really impressive. Uh, you are in the talent business. And you said that you had a particular use case that you use Skype for business on. Yes. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. Um, we use Skype and Skype for Business collaboratively. Um, we've got our recruiters that use Skype for Business, and then we've got our recruits that are familiar with Skype, using it for years, so they conduct uh, interviews, audio, video interviews, through Skype to Skype for Business. Fantastic. Brilliant. Tim, that's, that's really great to hear. Uh, I really appreciate you coming up on stage and talking to us today. I know that you have a deep session at Ignite. So I'd really encourage all of you to go and see how Kelly Services is really rolling this, these capabilities out uh, for their users. Thank you so much, Tim. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. <laughs> so folks, you know, we've been talking about modern collaboration experiences. We've been talking about you know, this modern approach to hardware. 
to bring to workspaces, collaborative workspaces. And we've also talked about you know, sort of this modern pattern where everything is in the cloud so that you know, you're not spending all your time you know, configuring servers and troubleshooting things. You have much better tools. So we truly have a vision around this. And we call that you know, sort of the modern IT vision, if you will. So we have a video. Let's go ahead and roll that uh, to show you about that. And then we can dig more into it, OK? There's always something on the horizon, new changes new challenges, and new opportunities. Skype for Business is changing the way IT delivers voice and video communications. You'll have a new way to deploy and scale communications for your entire organization. Hi. Did you see that they moved the broadcast up to tonight? Yeah, I saw it. Shouldn't be an issue. Our network's prepared for it. I do want to check out this uptick in Northeast mobile traffic. All right, I'm going to have help desk keep an eye on this one. The power to see the full picture from the entire business to a single user. Looks like adding new users there last week has increased their call volumes. Yeah, let's make sure we right-size that segment. To harness unified communications data and insights to keep your business on the leading edge. Imagine being backed by the world's largest enterprise cloud. From public cloud to hybrid solutions, with Microsoft as an extension of your IT. Your connection to the entire world, always on. Your communications at the highest quality. You'll be able to open a new office halfway across the world without ever getting on a plane provision thousands of new users and devices easily, and get them all working in no time, all while spending less time managing your deployment. It comes down to greater visibility and control. With the world's largest enterprise cloud supporting you, data will become insights. Insights will become action. Hey, guys. How is the New York site doing? Show me site utilization for New York. Who are our heaviest users? Sort by role. Can I get a copy of that? Of course. Action will become the way you meet new challenges on the horizon. Welcome, Sydney. Thank you for joining us. Shall we jump right in? We and empower your business to do more. That truly is our vision for modern IT, which looks very different than you know, how things have been. But it's really all possible. Everything you see there, this is not like you know, flying helicopters, taking my dog for a walk. I mean, this is real stuff. Power BI, speech-driven queries, big data, analytics, all that is finally very, so there that we can bring it to bear on transforming the IT experience. Now, all this is possible because of the cloud. Office 365 today is real. It is here. It is at scale. You know, 300 billion authentications a month. Okay, that is, you know, your security and authentication infrastructure running at scale. 38 percent of global international calling goes through the Skype network that is not part of Office 365. Take that in for a second. 38 percent of all international global calling goes over this infrastructure. 265 petabytes of data. On the commercial cloud, we have 70 million plus monthly active users on Office 365. The entire business is being run. Now, Skype is now absolutely a part of this global communication cloud. And today, I'm really happy to announce that we now have PSTN conferencing dial-in capabilities in 90 countries in 400 plus cities. Okay. You know, we shipped our service about 10 months ago. We're at 90 countries, 400 plus cities. We are at scale of the largest audio conferencing providers who have been in this business for 40 years. PSTN calling, where you have to be regulated. We launched in the US. We added UK. We added Puerto Rico. Today we're announcing, in preview, Spain and France availability as well. OK? Now, this is if you're getting all the numbers from us. If you're using a cloud PBX capability where you're taking your trunks and throwing them up into the cloud so that we can serve the PBX nature there, that actually is supported anywhere in the world. So that is real as well. And today, I'm really excited to announce 
that we now support regionally hosted meetings. Now, this was a pretty big ask because some folks had multinationals, you know, there's Europe, Asia, APAC, and they were serving everything out of the US and there were a lot of pain points around it. This year, in the next few months, you will be able to home meetings for users in data centers around the world within one tenant, okay? So this is all part of the global cloud that we are enabling. Now, we've also been doing a lot of work on the cloud voice experience to make sure from a feature perspective, ease of configuration perspective, diagnosability perspective, that we can actually really stand up to take over all these workloads. So in order to show you that, let me invite up Ben Canning, who's gonna show us some cloud voice magic. All right, thanks, Gurdip. <laughs> Morning, everybody. So uh, we truly are a global communications cloud now, and I wanna take you through some of the things that we've been working on, and I'm just so excited to be able to show this off to you. It's gonna be super geeky, but we're all geeks, and so I think it's gonna be great. Um, can I get my... There we go. Mm -hmm. So anywhere in the world, your users can join Skype for business meetings with all of that rich capability that Delanda showed, anywhere there's internet. But you know, there's some times when you just need to be able to pick up a phone and dial into a bridge, and that's the best option. And with Skype for business in the cloud, that just comes uh, as part of the package. We have, here you can see, numbers provided for you automatically for all of your users. You don't have to think about it or do anything. Over 68 countries out of the box, 90 countries, 400 cities available, all managed right here with nothing else that you need to do. If you need dedicated numbers, we've got you covered there too. So you can see here, I've got dedicated toll-free numbers that I've assigned to my tenant in the US. And I've also got international toll-free support. So I've got Vietnam and Egypt. So I have the ability to bring telephony and bring audio conferencing capabilities anywhere in the world that my users are and be able to get them, uh, get them into, those, uh, into those meetings. Um, all, uh, all just part of Office 365 right from the, from the get-go. So let's talk about PBX and calling. So as Gurdip said, uh, we've, got, uh, we've got calling uh, services in the United States, and you can see here um, that I've got numbers for in, my, uh, in my tenant in Office 365 all over the U.S., from Alabama to Wyoming, what, uh, what have you. Um, back in March, we also expanded out our service to the U.K., so I've now got our U.K. office is controlled, all numbers managed right from this same interface. Um, and of course, I can also support users on-prem anywhere in the world. So if you'd, like to, can, if you'd like to keep your existing telephony infrastructure or your existing trunks, you can still take advantage of the power of the Office 365 Cloud PBX, but integrate that in with an existing trunk infrastructure or an existing legacy PBX. We understand that your telephony needs are complex, and so we want to provide you with a simple, consistent interface for managing all of that and the power of the, of the, the Office 365 Cloud PBX, um, but while still giving you the, the flexibility. So, so that, that's, that's great, that's what we have, that's what we have today, but, uh, but I, you know, our business is always growing and expanding just like yours. Um, and so Gurdip has asked me to set up a brand new offices in Spain and France, and to do that right here on stage in front of you. And you know, in the past, this would have taken weeks of negotiating to go and get numbers from the carrier and assigning them to users and making sure that all of this stuff was punched down correctly, but I'm gonna do it right here, right in front of you. So let me show you how that works. So right here in Office 365, I can go to the phone number tab, and I can go ahead and get brand new, uh, brand new user numbers. So if I click on that, let's say, let's say we're gonna open it up an office right here in, uh, in France, and uh, it's, a, it's an office in Paris with 10 users, and boom, I've got phone numbers in France. And we're gonna open up an office in Spain as well, uh, in Barcelona, I think I pronounced that right. So we go ahead and add those numbers as well. 
And so again, just like that, I've now got numbers in Barcelona, I've got numbers in, uh, in Paris. When I click acquire numbers, those are my numbers. Those are real PSTN numbers that anyone in the world can pick up the phone and dial those numbers. As soon as I assign that number to a, to a user, they're lit up on the PBX. They've got a voicemail box, it's integrated in with Exchange. Anyone on the planet can call that phone number and it's gonna ring their, uh, their, their desktop. They've got call forwarding and hold and all of the stuff that you know, Delanda showed you earlier in the, in the UX, just like that all managed globally through one single interface. So that's pretty cool. All right, but, but, that's, but that's not all. Um, you know, I, I wanna set up the front door for my, uh, for my new office in Paris so people can call the main line uh, and get through. Um, so of course we have auto attendant capability in, uh, in our cloud PBX and I'll, I'll show you how to do that. So let's make a new auto attendant for the Paris office and I'll choose one of my numbers in France. And that's a French auto attendant, so we want it to speak uh, French. There we go. I'll click save. Wait, wait, not so fast. Sorry, am I going too fast? I, you know, I think he's pulling a David Copperfield on us. Okay, yeah, those numbers are configured and everything's great. Yeah, trust me, right? <laughs> go ahead. Why don't you go ahead and give the Paris office a, a, a call? Okay, let's do that. I'm going to call uh, from my uh, iPhone integrated dialer. Okay, it's ringing. Merci de votre appel pour Kuntoso. Pour joindre l'autre partie, tapez son nom suivi du symbole dièse. So try to, try to connect to me. Deux noms similaires oh, ont été trouvés. Pour Ben Kenny, appuyez sur un. Yeah, pick one, that's me. Transfert de votre appel vers Ben Kenny. Oh, and there's the call. So, just like Please that. Please leave a message for. So just like that, we've got a front door number for our, uh, uh, for our, uh, our Paris office. Um, I want to do one more thing. Um, Paris office is a, is a sales office. So I got my sales team there. I want to make sure that when customers call that front door that, it gets, uh, that they get routed to all of my sales guys. So I'm going to create a new uh, call queue. Um, so we'll call that the Paris sales team. Um, we'll pick a number. Um, and then we'll go ahead and uh, tell it what agents. And of course, we're integrated in with AD and Exchange. So any of your uh, you know distribution lists that you've got defined, uh, you can just pick that and say, yeah, that's my uh, that's my uh, agent list. And I click save, and now anyone in the planet can call that number, and they're going to get to my sales team. It's going to ring on all their desktops. I'm going to make sure that I never miss a customer call, just like that. Pretty cool. That's, that's great. Uh, I mean, you've basically been showing us how efficiently you can provision stuff, stuff which has taken you know, weeks sometimes. One more thing. Okay. One well, more thing. What do you got? Uh, so so I, I, I talked to you about, uh, assigning, uh, about assigning numbers to the users in, in Paris. And I, you know, I could do that here uh, through, the, through the UI. But I, you know, I, I'm a geek. I want to I wanna automate this so that I can go sit on a beach somewhere. I mean, so I can work even harder for, uh, for Gurdip. Uh, so, uh, uh, so of course we have uh, we we have PowerShell control for for all of this, and I'll just you know. So this is a simple script that I wrote up. Uh, oh my God, he's showing PowerShell in the keynote. It's crazy. Um, so this is a simple script that I wrote up. You can integrate this in with SAP or your Active Directory. All of your com you know your CRUD operations for managing user change can be automated here. So here's a couple of lines that say, Hey, do I have phone numbers in that region? If not, go get me some more phone numbers. I, I need some more phone numbers. Uh, and this line right here says, okay, get me that phone number and assign it to the user. And as soon as that line runs, that user's lit up, they've got a voicemail box, anybody on the planet can call them, all that stuff, that one line. So fully automated. So that's pretty cool. You with me? Yep. All right. But there's something that's even cooler. So this line here, this is the uh, this this executes the remote, uh, the regionally hosted meetings uh, stuff that that Gurdip talked about. So you're all running multinationals. You've got users in different sites, different countries. You want to make sure that those users are hosted in the appropriate region. So when they have their meetings, they're getting great performance. Their voice mailbox is stored in the right region, so you're getting good data sovereignty compliance. This line 
will take that user and seamlessly move them into the appropriate regional data center. You want the Japanese users in the, in the uh, Asia Pacific data center, no problem. You want the uh, Irish users in the EMEA data, in the European data center, no problem. It'll pick them up. It'll fix up all their meetings. So all their meetings will still just work and we'll update them all in place. It'll move their mailboxes. It'll do everything for you. Uh, with that one line of code. And not once did you have to think about, oh, do I have capacity in the European data center? Oh, did I schedule downtime for these users? All that, that's all taken care of. You don't have to think about any of it uh, just running that one line of code. That's pretty cool, but Ben, you know, they did warn me about you, uh, <laughs> letting you up on stage. Well, okay, so that's great. I think from an efficiency perspective, I think one of the things I'm sure folks want to hear about is how do you debug and diagnose issues when they happen. Absolutely. Uh, so can you tell us about that? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so we've been doing some great work on uh, what we call uh, Skype for Business Advanced Analytics. Mm -hmm. So this is a single pane of glass in the cloud for your tenant that gives you complete insight into what's going on with your tenant. All of the calls, uh, all of the conferences, all of the IM sessions, volume across the globe and at particular sites. You can use this portal to drill down on a number of things. So for example, I can drill down on uh, enterprise voice quality. Here we're looking at some data from Microsoft internally where we use this tool and I'm looking at about 3.1 million connected calls in the last 28 days. Uh, and I'm looking at an average quality of about 99%. So we're getting excellent call quality across a large volume of calls. But of course right here I have the quality distribution. So if I want to dig in and figure out, okay, what's going on with some of these bad calls? Do I have a you know, bad Wi-Fi deployment or is there a router that's bad or what's going on? I can, I can double click into any of those calls. Perhaps equally importantly, when the CEO gives you a call and says, hey, I was on this call with a customer and something went wrong, what's going on? Um, you can easily diagnose that problem. This system is totally integrated in with, with AD, so I can easily find anyone in the system in real time. Um, and double click on, uh, on, the, uh, on them and get a complete picture for that individual of all the uh, voice calls that they've made, the conferences they've made, what devices they're using. So you can see here that this is my, this is my page, um, so it's okay for me to show. <laughs> um, so my voice quality has been really good. You can see a bunch of calls uh, that I've had. In fact, this is a call that was about uh, a little earlier this morning uh, that, Gurdeep and I, uh, that Gurdeep and I had, um, and, and with a single click, I can drill down into that specific call. And so I can see that this was a call over Wi-Fi, uh, that I was here at the conference center and Gurdeep called me from, uh, from the airport. Um, I can see all of the call quality information and I can drill down deep, deep into all of the information about what was the maximum round trip time? What parts of my infrastructure did this cross over? Was there jitter or latency on the call? So everything I need to really dig down and diagnose what was going on with this, all at my fingertip for all of your calls and all of your conferences, all in one single pane of glass. How's that sound? That is very cool. All right. Ben, thank you so much. That thank was you. great. Great, so this is you know, a lot of the work that has been happening. Um, you know, once you get to this point, it is pretty easy to connect the dots. You, know, you can imagine this data now showing up with Power BI, so you can run you know, all kinds of queries on it. You can have machine learning, so you have system telling you that what are the hot spots in your system, you know, so you can go and proactively identify them. Uh, you can, in the, in the vision demo, you probably saw this person talking queries and saying, show me whatever. I mean, that all capability is already there with Power BI today. So you can see how these dots get connected to provide a really transformative experience. Now, you know, these tools are great, and I think we're super excited about it. And, but the one which is equally important is ensuring that these deployments are actually done right and, these, and they're operated right. Now, one of the things we've learned over the last few years, one of the single biggest indicators of if, whether you're gonna have a great experience or an okay experience with Skype for Business is how well did you plan, evaluate, plan, and deploy the product. Now, a lot of it with the cloud becomes a lot simpler because a lot of these are capabilities in the cloud, but there's still a bunch of work that needs to be done. So what we did is that we took all our learnings and tools and processes 
and we codified them into the Skype operation framework that we launched in July. The goal of this framework is to ensure that you have a high quality, predictable deployment when you roll these capabilities out inside your enterprise. This is super important. It's an end-to-end -end methodology. Now, we've decided to go one step further and to make sure that all the partners who deploy these solutions for you globally are actually certified with the Skype operations framework. In fact, today we're announcing the first set, which is six managed service partners from Microsoft who have gone through the certification, and they actually have offerings, managed service offerings, that are aligned with the Skype operation framework, whether it be evaluation to deployment to migration and then to operations. In fact, at this point, if you look at all the enterprises and the partners, more than 425 organizations have already gone through the certification and the training for Skype operation framework, more than 1,000 people. And our goal is to take the hundreds of partners we have globally and to put them through this process so that you know, the deployments always come out right. And that is a super important focus for us. So it's not just all the great end user experience and all the cloud and analytics and the consoles and the single pane of glass. It is also ensuring that this piece is done right for you. Now, I wanted to share with you the story of Cushman and Wakefield. Cushman and Wakefield, as you know, is a global, uh, is a global real estate organization. And they're huge. They have operations in many, many countries around the world. You know, when we rolled out E5 in Office 365 just 10 months ago, uh, they evaluated, made a decision, and are in the thick of deploying Office 365 E5 capabilities for all their users. Now, rather than me tell you uh, what they're doing, let us roll a video from Cushman and Wakefield. Our entrepreneurial DNA allows us to deliver superior value to our clients that differentiate us in the marketplace. Cushman and Wakefield is a leader in real estate services. The rapid growth that Cushman and Wakefield's experienced over the last 12 months has brought about challenges and complexities, 45,000 colleagues in over 60 countries. The investment we've made in Office 365 and E5 have allowed us to realize results a lot faster, doing in months what other companies would take years to accomplish. It's not only simple to use, but it keeps everyone connected at all times, no matter where you are in the world. Skype for Business is, to me, the jumping off point, a single platform that does all of our video and web conferencing, all of our telephony dialing. We're also excited about what PSTN in the cloud can do by getting rid of some of the legacy technology. Not only does it help us from a bottom line perspective, it helps us be more efficient and be more reactive. Office 365 gives us a platform that we can build this digital workplace on top of. It's scalable, it's flexible, and it's a game changer coming into the commercial real estate space. Folks, the key message I want to leave with you is that Skype is really ready now in the cloud for you to move to it. You know, I've been in this business for a while. As some of you know, I recognize a lot of people here, which I guess is a good sign. Um, and, you know, we've seen various friction points, various limitations that have sort of held us back from, you know, broad deployment sometimes. And I think we really are there at a point where these capabilities are available globally across all devices, with experiences that all the users already know, uh, an open ecosystem, worldwide availability, and an extensive partner network. I have never felt, you know, as I was preparing for this keynote, I felt that we really are at a moment here in time where things tip over. And they tip over because a lot of the things which have been holding back, which have not been in place, finally fall in place. We believe that moment in time is now, and this really requires you to take the next step now. So thank you very much. Thanks for taking the time. Really appreciate it.